Welcome to I Married a Melchizedek, episode eight, where we never really know where the conversation is going, although we do try to map things out a bit and people do stop by with a bit of information. If you're new to the show, this is where we talk about Melchizedek, eighth dimensional magic with Hazel Davies, headmaster, unity bubble facilitator, who shares invaluable information learned and experiences gained during her 18 plus year relationship with Jonathan C.R. Davies, her Melchizedek hubby. I'm your host, Renata Duma. Please remember to like, share, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you'll be notified immediately when another episode of I Married a Melchizedek airs. Links to all I Married a Melchizedek shows will also be listed on the Unity Bubble website at unitybubble.com. And if you're not familiar with the Unity Bubble or now Unity Living Process, as we slowly transition the name, I strongly encourage you to do so as it is truly one of the greatest energetic gifts to humanity since the law of one that I am quite sure that uh, most people, especially our audience knows about. Uh, If not, I'll put a link up on the video to a free version of it as it is not to be missed. And now, once again, without further ado, here's Hazel. Hazel, mm-hmm. welcome once again to your show. Thank you, Renata. Number eight. Here we go. <laughs> I know. Number, here we go. <laughs> it's a good number. I like it. <laughs> infinity. Infinity mm-hmm. eight. I like infinity eight. We took uh, a little break from our bi-monthly schedule to accommodate you, Hazel. Mm-hmm. Would you like to share a little bit about uh, what that was? And you you clearly survived, so. <laughs> well, yes, I did. Yes, it was, um, well, it was twofold, actually. Um, I had the, well, we had the eclipse and the full moon. And um, I I got a lot of the, what they call ascension symptoms at that time. Usually I can move pretty, e- well, relatively easily through them. But this one kind of, um mm-hmm. Mm, it took me for a bit of a ride. A um, lot of lot of vertigo, a lot of um, nauseousness. Just just not really not feeling very good at all for a couple of days. And I'm like, I can't do this. You know, I need to be I need to be on when when we do these shows. So yeah. And yeah. then and then I had my daughter come up, um, which thank goodness this um, um, the uncomfortableness passed through pretty quickly. Whether it was whether I released it or or absorbed it, I don't know. I don't really care. <laughs> but it left <laughs> the feelings left and and then my daughter came to visit and I have not seen them since um, August in person so three little kids you know uh, one five and twins at seven it was full on it was I oh, mean I had forgotten what energy like that is um, is all about but it was it was wonderful just wonderful to see them and see how they've grown yeah. and um, Aww, isn't that so then I really did need another day off to uh um yeah recover from that one so but it's all good it's all oh it's so wonderful so wonderful yeah Yeah, speaking of ascension symptoms yeah i know everybody that i know who who knows what's going on was having one form or another uh for me it was that you know the vibrating thing so Mm -hmm. lots of going outside and grounding and that that really helped but um yeah and and what else can we do we we just have to go through it right you just have to go through well you just do the best you can and that's that really is all you can do yeah and uh and hope and remain hopeful (laughs) remain hopeful anyway so let's get back to Jonathan and his apple pie. I still haven't oh. gotten over that story, honestly. I mean, so he literally manifests one out of pure desire. And there it is on the road when he's driving the car right in front of him with a ribbon tied on it. 
um, just in case he didn't realize it was a celestial gift. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> on that theme, mm -hmm. let's talk about the difference between creating, co-creating and manifesting. So mm. over to you. Okay. Yeah. Um, well, we had a lot of discussions after the apple pie incident there. And, you know, what, what was that about? Was it, was it creation? Did he create this apple pie or did he manifest it? And we're like, he couldn't have manifested it. How could he manifest it with this, this ribbon tied around it? I mean, it just because manifest. Okay. So let's start with, okay. Let's start with co-creation. Okay. <laughs> and we get to the simplest one first. Okay? Right. <laughs> so co-creation is is simply a, a joint effort something where people or um, beings are brought together for a common purpose a common intention so with the with the the creation the co-creation of the unity bubble that was a co-creation between unity who were a, a collective of higher beings and Jonathan who was the boots on the ground if you will um, the one that could hold the, that was incarnate and could also hold the frequency which was necessary in order to do to to create um, the unity right. what we know as the unity bubble or unity right. living field so that's that basically is co-creation um is is a joint effort <clears throat> so then we so then okay let me switch to manifestation then everybody manifests all the time. Whatever you are having in your experience, you are creating your own reality. Either by thoughts, by feelings, by intention, you are creating that. A lot of the problems we get to with, with um, manifesting, and we all know about the secret or the, what was termed as the law of attraction, mm -hmm. which is the law of resonance. So right. you'll resonate a certain frequency, you will resonate certain um, intentions, and that will show up in your reality. So as much as we can blame other people for doing certain things or being all that, um, it's really what we are, we are manifesting ourselves in how we are and how we are thinking and how we are acting that then just comes back to us. Right. So lot, oftentimes we think that we're going to manifest something and it doesn't quite manifest in the way that we think that, or we would like it to be. And that's because there are still issues in place. If right. one was really clear, then you would get exactly what you're uh, attempting to manifest. Well, it's so, that, that word, sorry to try that, that word resonance is very, very important here. Yeah. Um, I think, um, because that, that really is what it's all about. It's you manifest what you resonate with 24 seven, every single thought. Right. Mm -hmm. And I understand that it's, um, you know, we, we may be at the age of 40 manifesting something that we put in play at the age of 15 or, oh, yeah. or 25. Right. Oh, yeah. So it's, it's, it's not about that instantaneous kind of people think that it's okay. I'm going to do <laughs> this. And then instantly, no, no, no it's it's like the universe records all of your thought patterns right yeah. which is so, why the unity process work is so important mm -hmm. because it removes those less desired resonances right yes and it, and yes and the, those are the blockages which are preventing right. because the universe is an abundant universe so realistically you should be able to just create or manifest in anything so it depends on the clarity of your desire and of, of your intention which will come back to you but if you have blocks in place it's not going to have a clear pathway that's a personal work is um it's just well it's everything it's really everything absolutely so, you don't um, have to convince me no i know, <laughs> I know. I'm not <laughs> So. Oh, it's so true. It's so true. And uh, there's, uh, there's, I mean, it, it's, it's even on a smaller scale. I used to, in my place in Toronto, I used to have um, the, the trash area, you know, in my, in my condo. And I would say, I would call it the wish fulfilling trash area. And, you know, it'd be like, 
oh, you know, I could really use a little table in the corner there. And I just forget about it. Two or three days later, you know, invariably <laughs> something there for me. And I'm like, thank you. Mm-hmm. You know, and mm-hmm. um, it, it, it's just the, the, the amount of times I'm able to do that is absolutely uncanny. Mm-hmm. And I, I can't explain it, but uh, that is the difference between man. I'm not, you know, intentionally going out and creating something. Yeah. Well, creating is different. You see, creating is going back to source. Like manifestation is, is you are many, you are bringing in by resonance something that is already created. So, um, so let me go into live streams a little bit because that will explain um, how most of us, uh, being of the of the soul stream of the high soul stream, we man we 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 manifest things in, we bring things in for experience. So, um, so the on the live streams, if you think about on the one side, we have the angelics who are created to create. That is, that is part of their nature. It is, it is um, a simple thing for them to do because that's how they were created by the creator, God, whatever name you want to put from that side, is, is the ability to create form and function. That's what they're about. Okay. And, that, and that is their joy. That is their joy. It's not their, their, their job, you know, we've got to go to work and create something. It is their joy to do that. And they are most happy to do that, which they were designed to do. Right. On the other side, if you have a, if you have a creation, what real good is it if there's nobody there to enjoy it? Mm. So then on the other side, we have the high self side, which is more independent which is there to have experiences, many, many experiences. Mm. But they manifest. They don't create. Now, it's not that they cannot create. It's that it's not in their nature. So then they would have to learn how to do it. And there, is a, there are protocols. See, There are protocols in the, the order of the universe, which I, I don't want to go into now. It's really, really complex. And I don't even think that I could um, explain it in as much detail. Uh, time that we have here now Um, but there are protocols that you follow to create something now I can okay maybe I'm getting ahead of myself here Um, so that's that's the difference (laughs) okay I want to give you an experience of uh, when Jonathan was working with a, um, a group of physicists he was invited to join their kind of an elite group okay um because they they heard about Jonathan and there was some communication back and forth and they were purely on the science side, Jonathan, of course, purely on the spiritual side. And they realized that they were talking the same thing. Mm. So they invited Jonathan to be a part of their group. Um, they did many, many things. And one of the things that they that that was of interest to them, they called it to to learn how to create something from nothing. So basically, they're going to create something. So they followed the protocols, and it's it's very intense. It's mm. um, it's an ability to hold a, an absolute one pointed focus, and to be able to hold that focus. And there's all other other protocols that go along with it. So the experiment was that I was a part of the group too, <laughs> kind of like Jonathan's sidekick, right? Because I I was not at the same level as Jonathan by any stretch of the imagination, but they kind of, you know, said, there, there, Hazel, you come along. No, it's fine. (laughs) So we were doing this experiment um, and we had to pick something that we wanted to create, not to manifest, but to create. Okay. So we're sitting there talking to each other and going, oh, like we always get, you know, "Ah." and he said, I'm going to create a strawberry. And I and so I and I said, well, I'm going to create a piece of chocolate. <laughs> so 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 we started on the on, on they go this, together. Like, they go I mean, together. Like hey, yeah. So so we were following the protocols, very very intense. I don't remember how long we were at it, but it was it was quite a long time in, in one go. Um, and. <laughs> I didn't get anywhere because I just was not at that point of, of, of the intention and the focus uh, and all that. Jonathan, of course, 
um, had the ability, and I'll explain why in, in a moment, okay. um, he got to the point of being able to see the strawberry in a kind of a, a wave form, like a, um, like a sine a, wave. Yes, okay. you could see it, but it wasn't actually created as a strawberry that you could eat. If he'd been able to to hold it that one little bit longer, it, it actually would have um, been a creation. Wow. So, he, and he said, well, you just, you just kind of do it. It's just a shift. And I said, what are you talking about? Like, it's just a shift. I don't see my piece of chocolate being just a shift. <laughs> so anyway, he says, well, Melchizedek, you see, Melchizedek are a combination of angelics and high selves. Mm. So in their nature, they have the ability to create. So creation was actually, um, I wouldn't say that it was easy for Jonathan. It was a natural way of being. Mm. Whereas we would think about, you know, law of resonance, and, oh, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to have a new car and I, or I'm going to manifest a new table or right. whatever that is he would just kind of think about it like the apple pie. And somehow or other, you see, because of his, his frequency, mm -hmm. it, it would show up naturally. When he, when he actually tried to work at it, it didn't work so well because he was taking himself out of his natural way of operating. Mm -hmm. So, so creation is, is, is a different, it's not that uh, we could, we could all, we can all learn to do it, but it is right. quite a, it, it, it's, um, it's a lot of work. Well, I would venture to say that we will have done it. We just don't remember how right now, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, and I think, uh, I think we're going to get to the remembering once this ascension business, uh, you know, gets, uh, gets a move on. So. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you may just get to manifest that chocolate after all. I know. <laughs> yeah, <my chocolate. laughs> yeah. Alrighty. So this next subject that we wanted to talk about, it's big. And uh, I know our audience will benefit greatly from what you have to share about it. So, so let me set it up a little. Um, over the years, I knew Jonathan and yourself of course, and through my work as a master facilitator, I've come across the odd ego, if you know what I mean. Uh, I remember one recent client who was still in an, uh, he was still is, sorry, an amazing healer who works with the physical body. And he was outright challenging me when I told him that all his physical issues, and of course, those of his clients could be to a large extent, and I won't say how large, so as not to get into trouble, completely eradicated from the body through connecting with and clearing the underlying trauma that was associated with the dis-ease or the condition. And they just said, I don't resonate with what you're saying and that my issues are all based on abandonment trauma experienced as a child. I've dealt with all of that. And it wasn't until I started making it a game uh, and we went over several physical issues uh, that all suddenly seemed to come up for him, which he couldn't explain why, that all pointed to the same trauma. And I kept taking screenshots of what uh, came up in the big bad book and sending it to him. And uh, he finally laughed and said, okay, you're just making this up now. And I'm like, no, I'm not. So he got it, but it took, and, and from there, there was a huge shift. But that ego that was blocking any kind of like I was trying this way that way this way that like no way was it going to let it through and then eventually because I didn't give up I uh, guess and maybe because I used the element of humor and that's lighter I don't know why but I was able to finally break through so this this concept of of the ego how it either benefits us or hinders us Jonathan used to say the ego friend or foe as he wrote in that book that he that he wrote mm -hmm. right so I'll let you take the floor now. Mm -hmm. well that that would be a um a huge resistance that would be you know resistant because mm -hmm. the so it would have been challenging for this person to 
to think that you know the work that he has done in the past did not did not do it all that this the issues are still yeah, there exactly and you know sometimes it does take the physical body yeah and that is one way to to start work and um you know we know the reasons why and how they how they continue on yeah and as you say they can be all um I don't know about they can all be because there are certain um, soul contracts, etc., that kind of preclude mm-hmm. that. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Not so much going forward, but how we have known in the past. Yeah. Um, so the ego, the ego is the personality. It's the personality self. That why well, I am Hazel. You know, that's not my soul. My soul is doesn't have a name. It's with, without personality. It doesn't need to be looked after. Mm-hmm. My soul and my higher, my you know, other um, going up the ladder, my beings, um, they don't need to. They don't have. They don't have any need to be to be helped to be looked after. But the personality, which is incarnate in a body, it it needed to have something that would tell it, don't put your hand on that stove, it's hot. Right. You know, it, it was, the ego was designed to look after us in our physical body. But the thing is, we, we would like the ego to be in alignment. And if you notice by the, the very last thing to be dealt with, when we go through the removals and infusions of the unity bubble, The very, very last thing to do out of the 90 odd removals and infusions was to deal with the misaligned ego, not to get rid of the ego, Mm -hmm. but to get it in line. And I always like to say it's it is a question of alignment. Right. Alignment, meaning connection, Mm -hmm. meaning full connection. Um, So so the ego. The ego is doing its best to try and look after us. And it does a very good job with something that it was not really created to do that job, but nobody else was doing it, so it had to. So it was really, you know, pushed into doing something that it wasn't originally designed to do. It was really just designed to stay in alignment and, you know, move around with the the, um, personality self and enjoy it and you know, have connection and all that. But then, you know, the personality decide, oh, I'm going to jump off this cliff. Why not? Yeah. And the ego is going to say, whoa, wait a minute, you don't want to do that. So big tap on the shoulder, you know, right. or a two by four or, you know, like whatever is required, by it, you know, so we could blame the ego and say, get rid of the ego. But no, it's not about that. It's about, it's about getting the ego, taking the basically where we are right now is giving the ego another job because it's looked after us quite fine up to now. And then it feels when you're going through the unity bubble process, there is a point where you don't need the ego anymore because you are in alignment and you don't need the ego to look after you. So then the ego is like, well, what about me? What about me? Then I'm no use anymore. And then it kicks and screams, you know, because it it wants to be included. So then all the, you know, it wants attention and and, and all that, like a small child does, you know, naughty things to get attention. Mm -hmm. So we could say, get rid of the ego, but no, the better way to go is to give it another job and say, look, we don't need you to do that, but come along with us. And we can experience together and you can help in other ways, which is my the what I call is the graduation of the ego. When we align our our personality self with our soul, which then becomes actually a new being. Right. And then the ego can um, can go forward in a new role. And it is a much, a much nicer way to uh, and it's a beautiful way because the ego is like, oh, I'm still important. You know, I'm still, right. I can still have my two cents worth. 
Right. So it's not, you're actually telling your ego, okay, go, go and take care of somebody else. No. You're saying to it, um, work with me here mm -hmm. and allow me to integrate you into and, my new self. Yes. And the thing is, you know, we kind of think the ego is, is like a very kind of a masculine energy and a very, you know, fighting kind of energy. It's actually very fragile, mm. actually very fragile. Interesting. And you need to, one needs to show it that there's a better way, not tell it, not tell it off like it's done something wrong. It hasn't done anything wrong. It is just like, like, why don't we try it this way? So, so being very, very gentle, treat the ego with kid gloves. That's what I say. Wow. And it's amazing how I've never thought it, well, you know, there, there is that expression out there. Uh, oh, he or she has a very fragile ego, but it's as fragile as they can be. They can be feisty too and mm -hmm. cause a lot of, uh, mm -hmm. well, a misaligned a ego is, yeah. is yeah. 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 So, so the, the idea of giving it a new job to help facilitate further growth as opposed to throwing up blockages that may or may not be helpful mm -hmm. is part, very much part of the unity. Well, it's program. not the ego. It's not the ego that, that is creating the, you know, abandonment issues or the, you know, the trauma, the ego has not created that. Right. That is a soul journey of what's to come in and experience. We can blame it on the ego and blame it on any, anybody else or anything else, but it's still a per, it's really the personal journey, you know, of, the, of getting rid of the issues, which is what the bubble is all, all about. It is doing the personal work. <laughs> it always comes back to that. That's what it is. And so speaking of that, uh, and uh, because we want to follow up on our series of explanations on the different transmissions. Uh, let's look at the sacred garden. It's a good time mm. to talk about that after all this heavy duty ego talk. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. So why yes. is it so important and why does it feel like the least active transmission of the seven mm. unique mm. transmissions? Well, it came about because um, we had already dealt with the bubble, which was which was a lot of work. We had then, you know, developed the flow, and then we developed the breaking the bonds. And we didn't know that there would be anything more. And at that point, I I think it was I said to John, I said, I'm really tired. Like I'm really tired of doing this work. Is there never a t is there never a time when we can just relax and kind of enjoy what we've been doing for the last twenty odd years? Yeah. You know? And so Jonathan's like, Oh, really? oh, you're tired of this? I wonder if other people are feeling the same way. So we asked around and yes, a lot of people were saying, yeah, where's the, where's the time out? So this was where, oh, we need a place where we can um, yeah. um, almost embody, let's say, um, let's say mm -hmm. settle the energies that we've already dealt with. Yeah. Um, but also, um, like em embody them, like you don't lose just because we stop. It's like a plateau that you just enjoy where you, where you have got to all the work that has been accomplished so far and then be able to access this garden space, let's call it, which could be anything. It doesn't have to be butterflies and flowers. Right. It can be an individual. I mean, I get vision, so I would get a, a specific um, image for the person and it might be on a sailboat somewhere it might be somebody in art in an artist's studio yeah. I, it doesn't it, it it's not that's not relevant it's the feeling of peace tranquility harmony that you can access at any time even if it's for five minutes no matter where you are so even though it might appear that it's not um that significant it, it is actually because what you're doing is you are embodying the work that you've already done mm -hmm. and as you know you know there's many layers to this so it's um sure are yeah it's, it is a very valuable and especially at that point because it is well we didn't know at the time but now that now that the pro the process is finished um, uh, with the effortless living and the seven transmissions, 
plus the bubble makes eight. So this is actually the halfway point. That's right. That's right. I hear somebody back there wants a, I think somebody wants a unity bubble back there. They're yeah, the little dog. <laughs> yeah. he's, uh, he's Haven't you given him a bubble yet? It's so funny. He comes up and he sits right where I sit. After I've after I've done any work, he was ah! sitting on the couch. He sits right here, <laughs> and then looks at me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Ooh, ooh, I like that. Yeah. Ooh, yeah. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, so sweet. yeah, so yeah. The the garden is. Um, Sometimes there are other elements that come into place, whether you want to um, go, go into so, any kind of past stuff that can come up mm -hmm. into the present moment there. Um, a lot can actually happen in the garden, even though it's not a specific transmission. It, it, it is, it, well, it is, a, it is a transmission, but it's not like the other ones. No, yeah, 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 mm -hmm. well, it's to be experienced, right? Mm -hmm. Just like mm -hmm. love. We can't tell you what it's really all about. You have to experience it yourself. Yeah. So yeah. come come and see us. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, thank you for that. Mm -hmm. Uh yeah, it's uh it's a beautiful transmission. And and usually after breaking the bones, people really need it. Yeah. They do. They do. Yeah. So um that yeah, I'm I always feel really it's like. I feel really good about giving you this one. Yeah. <laughs> You're good. It's like this one might be a bit rocky, but this, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this one's going to be real. Is really yeah. okay? It, like yeah. we're going to love this. One. <laughs> it's easy to sell the the garden. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Anyway, so you've had a chance to see our new website. Yeah. And I'll let you say a few words about it with a little addition for our audience and for our unity community. It's 99% done. Hazel and I are just going over it with a fine tooth comb and we'll also be implementing some new features. So uh, it will, I promise, be live by the next I Married a Melchizedek episode. Mm -hmm. And Hazel, so what are your initial reactions? Oh, it's beautiful, Renata. It's just beautiful. Your work is just so, it's, it's incredible. It's, uh, I feel so blessed to, to have you, you know, and you, and you have worked on this for, you know, on our websites for, for many years. Yeah. But this is like, you know, it, it's like the epitome of just, it's, it's beautiful. The colors yeah. of it, the, the pr presentation, like how you described everything. Mm -hmm. And yes, right now we're just fine going through it just to make sure that everything yeah. is, is absolutely correct. And um, it's, it's going to be, um, and, and the, it is new branding. It is branding yeah. for, and the, it's time, you know, it's, it's time. The bubble, um, as uh, we'll probably still call it the bubble. Oh, you know, I think we will. We're in the bubble, but, <laughs> but I think for, um, to reach a wider audience, I think unity living, um and the energy field is mm -hmm. um will get the idea um more so thank you for all your work oh and well thank really you good. for the opportunity and and i'll tell you uh it's been a month i really uh i really uh went down the rabbit hole and uh i was just uh, you know it it yeah. gives me so much joy but i was also asking you know okay john and i make sure that i say <laughs> come on come on i really want to make sure like yeah. let's just really streamline this and let's yeah. please give me like I'm, I'm calling in the webmasters from the universe right come on guys show me show me show me and there were times where i would just be completely guided and like no not like that do it like this and and, and or go and look at something here go and look at something there and and so it got to the point where i was a little overwhelmed <laughs> i don't think i don't think um well i don't think people generally know how much work goes into to creating something like, oh. like that so it's a huge yeah. amount huge amount yeah. of work yeah well it well it was a month so far and we're not done yet. Like, yeah. like a, a month full time. You yeah. Know I mean, other than doing some clients and yeah. shopping and sleeping. Yeah. You know? And oh, you uh, do that too. <laughs> <laughs> From time to time. I allow myself. Yeah. 
But anyway, so, well, thank you. And so we will keep everybody posted. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I would say definitely before, if definitely before the next episode airs. So you we're, know, we're near on timing. Time. It will be fine timing. Exactly. Mm -hmm. It will it's be when it's supposed to be. There yeah. we go. Yeah. So now, of course, we need another Jonathan story. <laughs> This is the best time. So please and thank you. And you told me you remembered a new one and that you wouldn't tell me so that I would be surprised too. So I love that. Well, I, I don't, I don't think that you know this one. Okay. Um, anyway, I, I'm sitting back. I'm just going to. Okay. <laughs> All right. So setting the scene. So Jonathan, I was not there. Obviously this was something that happened to Jonathan in his late teens. Okay. He was on a, an outward bound um, course down in North Carolina in the Smoky okay. Mountains. And a bunch of guys, probably four of them, I don't really know, doesn't matter. Um, they were doing either an overnight or an extended hike um, up in the, in the Smoky Mountains. And the Smoky Mountains, it's a huge area and it's quite, um, it's quite formidable. That's quite rough. Mm. So there they are, boys being boys, you know, however, teenagers, old enough to be out on their own with their backpacks and, and everything. And it's getting a little bit late. And I don't know where they were supposed to be at a certain time, but the weather was starting to close in. Mm. There were big storm clouds coming up. And um, they didn't really know where they, where they were or where they were going. And then all of a sudden, this little man showed up. This is, this is Jonathan telling me this story. This little four foot nothing guy showed up on the path from nowhere. He had no, no backpack, nothing. He just showed up in his dungarees. And he said, boys, you know, there's a storm coming. Um, I don't know where you're going. But if you get stuck, there's a hunter's cabin just a couple of hundred feet up that way. And he pointed away wow. just in case you need it. And then, he, and then he said, bye. And off he went. So the, the guys are like, oh, you know, that, that's, that's really cool. Or, or like, what the heck? You know, who is this guy? Yeah. And then, of course, the heavens opened up and this, this major storm came wow. in, which is very common in the Smokies. That's why they call them Smoky, right? Because mm. they're all of a sudden. Um, so, so Jonathan says, well, there's a hunter's cabin up there. <laughs> he just told us that. Why don't we see if we can find it? So they wow. did. So they get there. They're soaking wet. I mean, it's just so um, there's a fire. There's wood for the fire. There's a match, match box there. There's one match, one match in the, in the box. And Jonathan's like, oh, this is going to be good. You know, if I don't do it right, we're really screwed. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> That's okay. uh, because, you know, they, they're not in good shape at this point. They weren't laughing anymore. No. I to say they were not laughing anymore. There was no. food there. There was a can opener and some beans or something or other. So they had something to eat and they had what they had in their backpacks, but they were soaking wet. Yeah. So anyway, so he lights the fire on the one match, which worked. So they were able to have the uh, a comfortable night and then continue on their journey. So what happened was then they came back because they knew where they were to show the people where the cabin was. There was no cabin. There was no cabin. <laughs> no. Yeah. So, see, Jonathan's I just, got, I just got goosebumps. <laughs> oh my God. There was no cabin. They knew exactly where they were. There was no cabin. Wow. Well, I, I thought you were just going to have me with the little, the apparition, apparition of the little guy, you know, uh -huh. but wow. Uh -huh. Wow. So and how that, was... that kind of thing would be, it wouldn't be common for Jonathan, but it in a way wasn't a surprise and in a way was kind of humorous, but very helpful. <laughs> wow. That, that is, uh, yeah, I mean, 
that is something that is you like that one eh? i do like that one <laughs> i'm gonna i'm gonna remember that one mm -hmm. i'm gonna remember that one wow well jonathan never ceased to amaze me when he was here <laughs> he still isn't ceasing to amaze me <laughs> Yeah. Well, I see we are once again getting to uh, the end of today's showtime. So tune in again with Hazel and myself and two Tuesdays, everyone, on I Am Married a Melchizedek, when we not only get to learn more about the life of a great being, Jonathan C.R. Davies, and the vital legacy he left behind, and Hazel's brilliant recollections thereof. We'll also be able to explore more about the Unity Living transmissions and how they assist individuals in the most profound ways imaginable. Once again, I'm your host, Renata Duma, or Rada, wishing you brilliant days ahead in the full flow of creation, full of joy, health, true abundance, and positive outcomes from lots and lots of manifestation. So Hazel, thank you once again for yet another wonderful show. We made it to episode eight. <laughs> we did. Thank you so much, Renata. That was fun. <laughs> Always is. Yeah. With much love thank from you. Hazel and I to you till we meet again on the next wise and equally whimsical and sometimes surprising episode of I Married a Melchizedek. See you then. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye for now. Bye. <laughs>